Welcome to another episode of the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. This week, the Deputy Chief Secretary and the Secretary for Finance and the Economy, Joel Jack, addresses the media. I am informed that we have um, additional cruise lines um, scheduling calls to Tobago as a result of the the ravages of the hurricanes in places um, north, northern Caribbean, um, northern Caribbean islands, and um, we have a couple additional cruise calls as a result of that. So the Secretary of Tourism, she should be with you next week, just to highlight, um, to give her projections and her plans. Um, for the new cruise season as well as to update the media on her recent mission to the world travel market. The divisions of agriculture and the divisions of health hosted a stakeholder meeting um, to discuss the draft national food and safety policy and um, they indicated that they had the support of all stakeholders, the chamber, and all um, the chamber among them and representatives from the hotel association as well as the agriculture and the agro-processing society. Additionally, the division of finance and the economy, as you are aware, we are celebrating Finance Week. We hosted the Tobago Economic and Business Outlook Conference. I must admit, um, that we have really set the bar um, very high this year. On Monday, we started with an inspirational Thanksgiving service to reflect, as we reflected on the past, and we committed, uh, made a commitment towards the future. We had the 11th annual Tobago Economic and Business Outlook Conference, and I must admit, I was, I was really. I don't want to say blown away, but um, it, it was really uh, an inspiring experience and I must thank our presenters and um, we had uh, um, persons in excess of 200, the last count was around lunchtime, 213 and you know everyone will stay for lunch. Um, so we had a, a, a count of approximately well over 200 persons. And um, a lot of persons stayed around until the end. And uh, a lot of attendees, in addition to myself, they indicated that they were also blown away. And we had some presentations from a cadre of leading minds in economics and business, academia. And together, all of our facilitators brought a multi-pronged approach to engendering the enabling environment required towards implementing feasible solutions to transition out of our critical pivot point successfully. Let me thank again publicly all of our presenters um, for their advice and for their recommendations. And um, we look forward to a number of their su suggestions, finding, um, finding their way onto a lot of policy initiatives by the Tobago House of Assembly. We conclude with our annual Youth Empowerment Forum, and I'm also excited or focused at the Youth Empowerment Forum will be on ICT, agriculture, uh, and the creative industry. Um, I encourage all young persons and persons who are in entrepreneurship and this, or you're thinking about getting to business and you're a young person, no matter what the age, I think um, you're, you will leave that forum challenged and inspired to get into business and to make um, career choices in some of the new and upcoming fields in ICT. Let me also announce today that the Assembly last week approved um, our public-private um, partnership 
IP3 unit that was formalized last week, as well as the Tobago Infrastructure Investment Strategy. Um, we are looking over the next 12 months to leverage a number of the relationships that we have been building over the years, especially with our multilateral partners. And I'm pleased to announce that with their support, we have been developing a very robust PPP policy framework for Tobago. Through an excellent consultancy, we have also been conducting further screening of approximately six candidate projects. And we have ramped up our capacity building exercises in this area. Among the projects that have been screened for implementation via the PPP modality, uh, a cancer care treatment center or affordable housing program, an agro-processing pro program, and as well as um, a couple of projects in the tourism sector. I'm even more delighted to share that the Executive Council um, that we'll be using this modality as an alternative financing mechanism. Um, we have set up the framework, we have done our, our homework, we are working with our multilateral partners. And um, let me say that with the formation of the unit, the unit will lead the Assembly's PPP program, as well as the development of the Tobago Infrastructure Investment Strategy over the next fiscal year. Um, I must say that we are taking great pains to invest up front in laying the necessary groundwork to ensure an effective and transparent program of activity. And we will continue to share um, all the information as our plans progress. Um, while we are talking about an update, the last time that I was here, I believe I made a commitment with respect to the ACH program. Let me see the migration to the automated clearing house. Um, in terms of the monthly pay down, we are close to about 95% complete in terms of the monthly paid per, um, employees. And approximately 75% of our daily paid employees of the assembly are now on the ACH program. We are also now in, in, in the process of reviewing um, the statutory deductions and deductions to credit unions and other um, institutions. And we will, our intention is to have these deductions as part of the automated um, clearinghouse system. And you might recall that what this system is envisioned to do is to ensure that we we um, are on track in terms of the timely payment of our employees and our stakeholders. I'm excited by the fact that we have, we have had significant improvements thus far, and we continue to work with all our stakeholders, both internal and external, as we, um, we move aggressively towards the benchmark that was like, um, established of paying our creditors within a 10 working day period when we are in receipt of an accurate invoice um, or bill and as well ensuring that we, we can pay our, our employees on time. With respect to our upcoming motion next Thursday, please be advised that uh, we'll, be we'll be having um, a, a special sitting on Thursday, the 23rd of November, as we review the Tobago House of Assemblies um, budgetary allocation and our plans and um, programs of the Assembly for fiscal 2018. And that sitting starts at um, 10 a.m. And this is part of our reallocation exercise. Um, this important motion will highlight the work program of the Assembly arising out of our allocation of financial resources in this year's national budget. It will also inform our daily activities and how we will strate strategically allocate our limited resources 
across the divisions of the assembly. In light of this critical role, I believe that um, all of Tobago, all Tobagonians, should take the opportunity to, to listen to the debate and to, to be aware of the plans and initiatives of this administration over the next four years. Two issues, one as it relates to the um, fast ferry and, and to the sea bridge, I'm informed that the evaluation of tenders by the port will be completed shortly and we will await an update from the board as to when a decision has been made, but we are informed that that process will be completed shortly. Additionally, the three-man committee appointed um, by the cabinet um, and they also include representatives from Tobago. Two representatives, Mr. Lai Alexander and Mr. Elias. Um, and this committee was established to look into the operations of, of the port and especially the, the Tobago Sea Bridge. And a report is scheduled to be submitted to cabinet by the end of November. As it relates to the school feeding program and the incident um, which took place last week, I'm informed that samples of the, of the lunch that was served on the day um, have been sent to the food and drug lab for testing and we await uh, the results um, from those tests. The Outlook Conference was, was, was good. But the keynote speaker made some very, very interesting points. And one of them that stood out to me was the, the autonomy, what he spoke about with regards to autonomy and how it could be, um, in, in, in some minds, it could be a great thing for Tobago, but then it could also be something that could have us in a very tight position with regards to, he spoke about finances because our finances really come from the central government and if we are cut off, perhaps that might be a challenge. Um, have you put any thought into that? What are your views on that? Given that we have, we, we've gotten another perspective to this autonomy thing that Tobagonians so want. I think Mr. Saunders outlined a difference between secession and greater autonomy. And um, we have never advocated for secession. That has never been um, in our documents submitted to the central government. What we have argued for, we have argued for greater autonomy. And he indicated that the, the draft document presents an exciting platform for us to start the negotiations. And with, with um, a lot of support, um, we can have um, the autonomy that we desire um, working together um, with the central government. As it relates to, to Tobago or finances and the Tobago economy, I think what is of primary importance is how do you define <coughs> Tobago? And that definition of Tobago, if you use all the international standards and benchmark, uh, would mean that the Tobago, as defined by the nautical miles, would embrace and encompass a lot of the economic drivers in the national economy. So when you're talking about how we, our finances and, and um, in terms of our of how we would survive, you also have to look at that in context. That the first de definition in terms of for greater autonomy is how you define the land space, the air space, your, and your marine boundaries. And if we use all the international benchmarks, then a lot of what we call the, the oil and gas industry will be included in, in, in Tobago. So Mr. Saunders really place that in context in terms of the fact and he what he and how we premise it as well he premised it in the context of ongoing negotiations internationally between Scotland and the UK between Catalonia and Spain and other entities so um, from our standpoint here at the Assembly and this administration, we have never argued about secession. So let me want to debunk that. And then if you're starting to talk about Tobago's true contribution to national economic activity, 
your starting point and your premise has to be with how do you define Tobago. And within that definition, using international benchmarks, um, you know, we will have a, a, a more clearer picture to indicate that we're not mendicants. We have made our contributions, but in the current confines of the law, um, you know, our true, our true contribution is, is not taken into consideration. To respect with the situation at the Esplanade, what is the update on it? I believe you're referring to, to the tenants at yes, the Esplanade. Yes, um, the, yes um, I believe the rent was adjusted. Mm -hmm. And as I indicated at the time that um, we were in discussions with a couple of the tenants who were unable to, to um, treat with the payment of the rent. Um, as far as I, I am aware, um, we still have a lot of persons on the waiting list who are desirous of using that retail space to, to set up their business, establish or continue, or expand their business operations. So, um, and that is um, unfortunate that some persons opted not to look at uh, options, but that is in a stricter sense how business operates. Um, we have, uh, a tiered approach to the to the rent at the Esplanade. Some entities um, with prime spots play, pay a slightly higher um, rental fee. Other persons um, pay uh, a minimal fee. But when you look at the the rent, the rates at the Esplanade, and you compare it to um, the rent around Scarborough, you could see that it's really um, I don't want to call it peppercorn. But it's really um, look, looking at the esplanade and using that space um, in a multi-pronged approach. You would have some anchor tenants and experienced businesses, and you'll also have persons who are just getting into business to use the spot as an incubation center. But it cannot be for everyone because um, for us to keep that space looking clean, green, and to have it safe and serene, um, it, it, it's, it's costly, and the assembly we have to start weaning some of our um, some of our boards and have them become self-sufficient and independent. So, and you have to strike the right balance. So that is where we are. At. Um, I know also last time um, I raised the question or even asked um, some of the tenants. They were saying business is usually slow because people don't find Scarborough attractive anymore. So they prefer to go to Crown Point or other destinations because Scarborough <coughs> don't have anything. And um, I think last time you said that you were working on trying to beautify or come up with some creative ideas to get people to town to shop, etc. So relating to plans, is there in, any progress on that? Well, in terms of beautifying the Esplanade, plans are in train. I, I'm aware that um, the Esplanade is in discussions with a commercial um, entity, um, branding, advertising agency in terms of improving the aesthetics. That is in, um, that those discussions are in train and I await the outcome. Um, we also, have designs to connect the Esplanade to the port. That is something that is urgent, so at least we can have that direct traffic between the port and the Esplanade. Um, that is, will take some, because um, we'll have to build a bridge between, uh, a walkway between the, um, the port and the Esplanade, that will take um, some funding. And um, we also explain, exploring other alternatives to see how we can attract persons to come to the Esplanade. You might recall the Fish Friday and some other activities. So we continue to work with um, the entrepreneurs at the Esplanade and the board. They continue to, to have discussions and come up with, with suggestions. And, um, you know, I am Hatton. You spoke about persons moving to Scarborough. I am seeing a lot of construction going on in Scarborough in terms of providing additional retail space. So what that says is that the private sector is looking to create additional retail space in Scarborough and um, probably strike a balance between Scarborough and Crown Point. So while some persons may indicate that Scarborough is, you know, may not have that, uh, uh, that significant traffic, I think what you also have to look at is um, examine what are the peak periods um, during some of the downtime, how, 
um, entrepreneurs and business persons on the Esplanade, how they themselves can in increase traffic and attract persons to the Esplanade. I know a number of um, a no number of persons are patrons to the Esplanade um, during the breakfast and um, lunch periods. I mean, I know a lot of persons are on their diet and exercise programs and and they venture and they, they patronize the Oasis salad bar. So what you want is a number of additional anchor tenants and we, it's, it's, we continue to have that evolving situations while some businesses strive, some businesses are challenged and you know, other persons, as I indicated, um, you know, a moment ago, that there's a, a long waiting list of persons who are seeking to set up business on the Esplanade. So we continue to work, continue to ensure that um, the space is attractive, and um, it's our responsibility to provide a, an enabling environment for businesses to thrive and succeed, and we'll continue to do this. In regards to the um, meeting you would have had with Tim Stew, the High Commissioner of the UK to Trinidad and Tobago. Um, he spoke about investment um, opportunities and conversations he had with you in regard to Tobago and the UK. Do you care to share anything on that today? Well, a couple of things. What we spoke about uh, um, with respect to the in terms of business facilitation and um, also attracting investment from the UK to Tobago. We also spoke about some possible areas of investment, for example, it, um, in tourism and in business. Um, we also will have um, a meeting between the Hall Chamber of Commerce. Um, they will also be paying a visit to Tobago sometime early next year. And we're also exploring avenues um, with respect to how we can partner and have a lot of Tobago's products, um, how they can penetrate the UK export market. Um, during my budget consultation, I, I had uh, a meeting with the agro-processors and the Tobago Beekeepers Association. They also indicated that there is significant interest in the UK for Tobago's honey. Um, what they would have to do is to scale up and to increase their production. That is something that we'll have to assist them, assist them in. Um, we are committed to having, um, you know, while we increase demand um, and at the domestic level um, with uh, a number of initiatives, um, both in, in Tobago and having products um, center to the shelves of Trinidad supermarkets and stores, um, etc. We're also committed to having a number of our products um, penetrate international markets, especially where we have a, um, a strong diaspora and to see how we can start earning foreign exchange um, from exports. So we continue to work with um, um, the, His Excellency Mr. Tim Stew and um, and other high commissions as we seek to facilitate export. You might recall um, it was February, I think. I'm getting young. I'm running with this year, February last year, but recent, this year, February, sorry, yes. The new high commissioner, um, the new ambassador from Canada, um, we hosted an, an event, an export facilitation session at Ravenel's um, to see how we can um, assist a number of our um, agro-processors, entrepreneurs, and farmers to see how we can get them to penetrate the Canadian market. So our work continues, and um, let me also extend um, um, congratulations to the Sigan Hill Senior Comprehensive School um, coming out of their partnership with the UK High Commission, we were able to have a, a sort of model done using solar energy and renewable energy. And I'm hoping that that is a model that we can replicate across all the schools in, um, in Tobago and um, have young persons really excited about getting into renewable energy. Um, we have also had um, some interest from persons who are willing to explore the possibilities of setting up a wind farm here in Tobago. Um, but I think we have to play our part in the assembly in terms of 
establishing the policy framework and keeping in keeping with our mantra of clean, green, safe and serene as we explore clean and renewable energy. And this is an area that we'll be looking to um, over the next four years and we've, we've started a number of initiatives and we propose to continue. Did you set any timelines by when you would like to get this started? Well, the, the, that pilot was, was hosted by one of the, the scholarship winners from Tobago and um, I'm also exploring the possibility to see if we can have a, a pilot done in one of the communities across the island. Um, we're hoping that as early as the first quarter of 2018 that we, we could establish that. Um, but just as we, 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 we have the support of the British High Commission, you know, that is a model that we'll have to replicate. And, um, but it also requires um, additional support and some interest from the, the young persons. And as we're talking about young persons um, and the youth forum, um, and new technology, I think, I think I would like to highlight that ICT would be one of the areas that um, young persons will be ex exposed to as well. And the prospects um, for, for a number of young persons getting into ICT, exploring innovation, and there will be a, a strong possibility, and you might recall in my budget statement that I announced that with the establishment of the Tobago Innovation Center, um, the possibility of at least 500, uh, um, the creation of 500 jobs for Tobagonians, starting with the, the certification and training of a cadre of trained trainers um, who will be responsible for, for training and empowering a number of, of our young persons. So I'm excited about that. Recently, we would have had a spike um, two murders which would have practically followed each other about a week apart. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are your thoughts about that and how do you feel when it comes to national security and security in general on the island? I think um, I would love a crime-free Tobago from all vantage points, serious crimes, minor crimes. Um, and you know, uh, please I must extend my condolences to the Biri family and all those persons. Um, who would have suffered um, during this year and previous years as a result of um, the speed of murders um, in Tobago. You might recall last year, I think the murder rate stood at, at five, five or so persons, and, and we have doubled that number. And we continue to work with the um, Minister of National Security and the ACP here in Tobago, Mr. Moore, to see what initiatives that we can put in place to, to continue to continue the reduction in crime. We hold constant meetings with them. You might recall it was earlier this year we hosted a, a major conference with all the heads of the security agencies here in Tobago, and we continue to work on beefing up our security apparatus. And um, while there was one murder, let me commend the police for, um, for their work in terms of apprehending the perpetrators. And I am quite confident that we'll, we'll see an, increasing, an increase in the, um, in the fact that a number of these perpetrators will be brought to justice very soon. And we're seeing really an, an, an increase in, in crime solving. And, um, my commendation goes ex is extended to the Minister of National Security. But let me see that um, I have made a request to him as well in during our conversations that we need to have um, an expansion of the CCTV unit. Um, the commissioner here has also indicated that um, we'll be having additional uh, manpower in Tobago um, um, soon and um, with the completion of the Old Grange Police Station and the Roxborough Police Station. I think police officers will be housed um, in, um, in, you know, in their own space. And um, you know, with that, we should see um, additional crime fighting support. But we continue to work with um, the police, with the Ministry of National Security, and all the agencies to ensure that. Um, crime in Tobago is kept at a minimum and this is something that I am passionate about. Thank you for staying with us for the Tobago House of Assembly's post-executive council media briefing 
for the week ending October 18th, 2017.